We're just a couple that's building our bucket list of dream cars, raising our kids in the shop, and enjoying this ride we call life. Follow along as we work on a host of different projects for practically any budget. Welcome to the Finn Farm. Welcome to my latest experiment. This is a big one, the one I've been waiting for all my life. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In our last video, we replaced the center section and left rear axle on our 1969 Dodge Charger. And your rear end is breaking out. Unfortunately, we missed our opportunity to take it to the Chrysler Nationals in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Which meant we only had three days to finish the car before we would lose the shop. I'm just kidding. Actually, we only had three days to finish the car before we were going to leave for the 25th anniversary Cooter's Place show in Luray, Virginia. Have a nice trip. And so that's where our next journey begins on the road and on our way to Luray, Virginia for the car show. That's a lot of luggage for a little vacation. Thanks to VRBO.com, we were able to secure accommodations that were amazingly close to where the show was going to be held. Our cabin was just right behind Cooter's Place, but it was about a mile and a half up the mountain. To the summit of Mount Wanahakalugi. The topography and scenery of where our cabin was located really set the tone for our trip. It's the wrong tone. Transitioning from the woods and then into an open field, it's probably the closest to what Hazard originally felt like and looked like that we could get. Taking the scenic route, huh? In fact, we feel quite fortunate that we were able to maintain our lodging accommodations for this trip because not just six months ago, this particular area suffered from some forestry fires. But that's enough chatter about that. Get on with it! Let's check out the show. The first day of the show was held in the field adjacent to Cooter's Place, right in Luray. It's only for one day. One day. Here, generally, owners lined up with their cars along with other movie replica cars for public viewing. Holy crap! In the store, fans lined up to meet some of their favorite actors from the show, including Daisy Duke, who was played by Katherine Bach. What do we got here? <laughs> and Luke Duke, who was played by Tom Wopat. My name's Luke Duke. We had the pleasure of meeting a few new to us faces, including Byron Cherry, who played Koi Duke in season five. Koi? I'm not being Koi. And Jeff Altman, who played Huey Hogg in the series. Who are you? The second day of the show took us across town to the Luray Fairgrounds. The change of being. Because they were anticipating about 20,000 or more people to come to the show, they really needed to change the venue location in order to accommodate the crowd that Ben Jones, who played Cooter, break a one, break a one, might be crazy, but I ain't done. And his wife, Miss Alma, had hoped to draw in. I hope you weren't too inconvenienced, ma'am. Even though the show was about three days long, it's only for a couple of days. There were still plenty of things to see and do here, including the car show that featured General Lee's old and new. But General Lee stood out like a watermelon in a bowl full of chickpeas. Hazard Sheriff cars driven by Sheriff Roscoe Coltrane. Sheriff uh, Roscoe Coltrane here. Boss Hogg's Cadillac and so much more. There was even plenty for the kids to see and do. I hate kids. Again, just kidding. Saturday saw more of the cast members that came in to sign autographs and take pictures. And that only means one thing. And despite the rainy, misty weather, some fans stood in line to wait all day for Catherine Buck. Get top pick and pause off. For us, it was the opportunity to catch up with old friends and make some new ones. Many of them, like us, driving their General Lees across the country to be here. I think the final count for Saturday was 50 General Lees in presence for the show. For General Lee to be eating up the road this early in the morning. 
Each car was built different in their own way, some with black interior, some with tan. Can you spot which car is ours? And even though it's quite obvious because we have the naked general. Naked, really naked. That bright orange paint job still held its own. One of our highlights early in the day was getting to meet Miss Kay. She was Kathy Bach's stunt double on the show. And she just happened to be out and about to sign a few cars and talk to some people. And if the actors in the car show didn't pique your interest, there was tons of music to be heard. What are you interested in? From Cooter's Garage Band to Tom Wopat, it was an excellent place to pull up a seat and kick back. You can say that again. <laughs> day two of the show. It was time to grab a meal and find some entertainment for the evening. Let's get out of here. Stick around, Hazard. <laughs> if any of y'all ever drive through Hazard, well, you might want to remember that if it's got wheels, folks tend to want to race it. Before we grab dinner though, it was time to freshen up a bit at our cabin. Bo, you get out of here and stay out of my class. Since we had arrived in the dark the night before, it was nice to get a chance to look at the scenery in the daylight once more. Like I said, the driveway in and out of this cabin was exactly a mile and a half long. Three hour tour. But we discovered some cool things along the way. Like this neat old Ford that was shot to shit. Just Freezing, woman. Freezing. Sitting here abandoned in what appears to be an old homestead. What are we, John Dillinger? It's an old road here. An old homestead. Yeah, it's right here. Look up in here, all the rock work. The wall coming down. And while it was neat to do some exploring, we didn't stray far from the road. And if that wasn't Hazard County enough for you, our cabin even featured its very own Hazard Pond. Get a load of that view. Huge tracks of land. Now that we were freshened up, it was time to play our favorite game, Chinese Fire Drill. Sorry about dragging you into that Chinese fire drill back there. Actually.
actually we had to cross a couple cattle guards after passing through the pasture, the last of which was a little bit low for the car. Hello, fat ass! <laughs> we were off to dinner at a local pizza joint, but of course not without a little fun first. Good company. Get it, boys. Old Roscoe didn't see that one coming. Don't worry, we kept everything perfectly safe. Part of your beginning sound just like my mother. After dinner and a race, it was time to catch up with some old friends. Alas, our time at the cabin had come to an end. We thoroughly enjoyed our stay, from the gorgeous views to the comfortable hot tub. Let's all go skinny dipping. Now, ain't that a good idea? Our hosts were incredibly gracious, and we hope to stay there sometime again. But the fun doesn't stop here. We still have one more day left of the show. On the third day of the show, we stopped to check out some legitimate screen-used cars from the series. Like this Hazard County Sheriff's car seen in the first season in episodes like One Armed Bandits. Hey, did you see that? Do what? Just joke, I'm joking. This generally is one of the original 17 that still exist from the series. Just moments before I took this footage, we witnessed some gentleman trying to crawl through the window, Dukes of Hazard style, and try to get into this car. No way. Way. Sure. Suffice to say, the owner was not impressed. Folks, I shouldn't have to say this, but if it's not yours, don't touch it. This car hasn't been seen in years, and the owners brought it out to this event and decided not to gatekeep anything. They didn't put it behind a barrier. They just asked that you be respectful and not put your hands all over it. I mean, this is the real deal. There's only 17 of the series cars left, and they're only original once. Whatever.
<laughs> yes, we did. We were going to come after him for it. Now, while James Best, who did play Sheriff Roscoe in the series, passed away a few years ago, we caught up with this gentleman and thought he was pretty convincing. Speaking of convincing, we had the opportunity to catch Wade Jennings' show. If I didn't know any better, I would have sworn I was listening to Wade Jennings himself, the balladeer of the Dukes of Hazard, and not his grandson, Way. Like a duck on a June bug. And love them because they are American. When this song was first brought to me, it was written by a man named Michael Curtis. And I said, man, this song is genius. It could really bring us all together. We really need this in our lives, y'all. We need to be able to love each other because we're Americans. I hope y'all listen closely to every word of this song because if it don't hit you, no matter what your beliefs are, then I don't know what to tell you. There ain't much left that's gonna do it. <laughs> Well, I think that just about does it for this video. If you've stuck around this far, thank you so much for watching. It's like watching Top Gear. I hope you enjoyed this show recap just as much as we enjoyed participating. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up. It helps the channel grow. That YouTube algorithm thinks, hey, if they like it, other people might too. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So help us be seen by other viewers and give us a thumbs up. Heck, leave a comment. Let us know what you think your favorite part is. Or if you hated it, you could tell us that too. <laughs> so until next time friends we'll catch you in the next video and leave you with the last concert of the day wade jennings <laughs>